Who was Maria Malibran? Maria Malibran was a 19th century opera singer who died in, 19, in 1836 at the age of 28. She had been performing in England and had sustained injuries after falling from a horse. Refusing to see a physician, she insisted that she continue performing. She is said to have collapsed in, on stage one night and demanded to still perform at a church the following morning. She died approximately a week after this. In 1972, Werner Schroeter released his seventh feature film with the death of Maria Malibran. You might recall our previous brief discussion of Werner Schroeder's 1969 feature debut, Eike Katapa. In many respects, the death of Maria Malibran feels like a successor to the aesthetics of Schroeder's feature debut. I described Schroeder's debut as dizzying to describe. I feel rather similarly with Malibran, although we are granted some gravity with the context of who Maria Malibran is as an historical figure. Not that the film explicitly informs us of this, I have to admit this is something I probably take for granted, but prior to viewing this picture I can quickly research what or who Maria Malibran is in 2021. It gives myself the impression of a concept Schroeder had in his mind, therefore it is easy to read the death of Maria Malibran through the praxis of it being a series of illustrations of this named individual. Predominantly, opera pervades the sonic extract of this film as to be expected, and like Ike Katapa, the unusual decision of deliberately desynchronizing, or not attempting it whatsoever, of image and sound. What we have comes across as a rush of disjointed memories, ranging from vivid lucidity to incomprehensible e eccentricity. Amos Vogel, author of the rather well-known, I mean relatively, 1974 film book, Film as a Subversive Art, had this to say in this aforementioned text, on the death of Maria Malibran. This bizarre film by one of the most original directors now working in Germany is hermetic, expressionistic, oblique and of a creative perversity that bespeaks the presence of a genius. Purporting to deal with a real life 19th century diva whose popularity was such that overexertion led to her death while singing, the film is actually a grisly series of frozen or tortured tableau, predominantly lesbian in implication, of heavily rogued, frequently ugly women who, pretending to sing heavy opera, go through contorted icy attempts at communication that lead nowhere. The lip sync is off, the singing is off pitch, mouths are frequently open with, while no sound issues forth or closed, with mellifluous arias or cheap popular songs heard on scratchy renditions of old records. Neither burlesque nor slapstick, the film's intended at least in the beginning, is nevertheless ironical and subversive, though mysteriously so. However, it grows increasingly dark and more threatening, with screams, faces bathed in Vaseline, red, wet mouths, smeared eye shadows, and dehumanized figures. One cannot explain Schroeder's work, other than recognize his debunking of opera as a met metaphorical rejection of bourgeois society, but one trembles in recognition of a prospective major talent. Terrific stuff. I note use, four user-critical reviews exist of this film on IMDb. I have chosen to read them out here because I was very, very delighted to see that two users rated this film a 10 out of 10, and the other two rated it a 2 out of 10. Juicy. Let's read on. Start with the first positive review penned by username SleepSev, beguilingly titled The Most Enjoyable Dream of My Life. The death of Maria Malibran is a very strange film. After I've seen this movie twice, I still know very little about Maria Malibran. Everything that happens in this film is beyond my understanding. When I walked out of the cinema, I felt like waking up from a dream. I remember the dream quite clearly, but I don't understand what happens in it and why it happens like that. All I know is that this is the most enjoyable dream I have ever had in my whole life. Though I never like opera, I still love this film very much. Though I don't understand what is the plot or the story behind this film, it captivates me entirely. The photography, the art, direction, the lighting, and the makeup are of excellent quality. The acting, the editing, and the music are exceptional too. I like it very much that the camera often focuses on the expression on characters' faces. This technique both heightens the beauty of the image and makes it look very funny at the same time. I also like the movement and the positions of characters in each frame very much. However, the death of Marie Malibran is not just a very strange film. It is not just a film full of beautiful images and beautiful soundtracks. It is not just an experimental film. It means much more than that to me. Many images in this film touch me so strongly that I can't imagine how I can adequately express how much I like it. More importantly, I was completely surprised and overwhelmed with joy to find that many images in this film are somehow like what my friends and I have been fantasizing for a long time. Werner Schroeder is the first guy that I know who can make our fantasy come true. The death of Maria Malibran really expands the boundary of cinematic empire in my viewing experience. I have never known nor imagined one can make a movie like this. But now that I know a film like this really exists, my hope and my faith in the potential of cinema are restored, and I will go 
to see a movie with much more excitement and eagerness than before, cinema can prove itself to me a game that is really unpredictable. And now onto the next laudatory appraisal, courtesy of username semiotechlab-658-95444, who titled his review, The Fragility of Words. I'm really liking these quite amorous banners. Words can easily break, since the relation between form and meaning is arbitrary. Moreover, a word that does not hit its object is superfluous. Language as a whole is misused by daily gossip and the boulevard press. Since a long time, the problem to recognise the forest starting from the individual trees has become obsolete. Our problem has become now not to overlook the trees when we believe to recognise the forest. However, since it is basically enough to associate any form with a certain meaning, language can become a master of its own. The Dadaists had shown that sense and meaning are creeping back into language by the back door, after that, they have been thrown out by the main entrance. Schroeder systematically, systematically yes, combines more or less senseless speeches to unfitting persons. Also purposely, the moving of the mouth does not correspond to the words we hear, and not even to the texts that they sing. Compared to language, music has at least one dimension more, the melody. Like the sounds of the words, so the parts of the melody endo speech with sense our speech of sense, excuse me, but with their own sense, and this new sense may be our last hope after we have recognised that our everyday language has lost its proper sense. Like the words, their sounds, detached from their meanings, float along as water does, so the characters are not strongly differentiated anymore. They seem to be individuals, but they share their identities, they participate in one another in an eternal exchange. And now, most interestingly, perhaps, the two negative write-ups. Firstly, from username Timon88, who titles his review simply and beautifully. What? How on earth does one attempt to describe a movie like this? First, a caveat or two. Do not go to this film expecting any sort of plot or even coherent narrative. Do not expect any information about Maria Malibran's life or even her death for that matter. She died of complications from a horseback riding accident. One could never guess this from the film. Do not expect any sense of what it is to be a singer or any sense of opera as an art form. Do not even expect to have any clear idea which face on the screen is supposed to be Maria Malibran. Obviously, this film was an utter confused mystery to me. A few arresting images and a bunch of commonplace and pointless ones are all well and good, but one needs some sort of structure. Even the suggestion of a guideline would have been welcome to hang them on in order for them to have any real power. I'll do my best to describe the opening 15 minutes or so of the film as I remember it. It's been almost 15 years. It stayed with me this long, so it must have had something to do... So it must have had something to it, but God knows what. There are two female heads from about the shoulders up in the frame and leaning in from either side toward each other at odd angles. The faces are made up with powder, complete with a beauty mark or two, and both appear to be wearing 18th century style wigs, suggesting stage costuming or court dress of some kind. In the background, a muted scratchy recording of a chunk of the first movement of Beethoven's triple concerto is playing, which goes back to some point partway through the movement several times in case you didn't hear it the first time, presumably, and this is not any sort of logical edit we're talking about. There is no dialogue, no movement, perhaps the heads do very slowly lean imperceptibly toward each other. It's difficult to know for sure. This goes on for 15 minutes or so. That's it. The effect would be mind-numbing if it weren't so annoying. It then shifts to something else completely and someone finally says something, but one is so busy trying to figure out what Schroeder could have possibly meant to convey by that impossibly long opening exercise that it's difficult to settle into any sort of groove with it. Nothing is explained, almost nothing is suggested, and what is suggested is done so with no frame of reference, making the suggestions ultimately meaningless. Perhaps the key is to experience this film, quote, as a dream, unquote. I, for one, do not experience art that way, and this film certainly has pretensions to art, and would suggest that if it has nothing more to offer than a bunch of dreamlike images and sequences of no apparent connection, subtext, or even, or even frame of reference, that's, then it's not art in the first place, which leaves the question, what is it? And finally, from username Horst underscore in underscore translation, titling his piece, A Failure from Every Perspective. Der Tod der Maria Malibran, or The Death of Maria Malibran, is a West German German language film from 1972, will soon have its 45th anniversary, and it is one of the earlier full feature works by filmmaker Werner Schroeder, who wrote and directed this one. His lead actress here is Magdalena Montezuma, with whom he worked on other occasions too, but audiences today may be more familiar with Christian Kaufman and Candy Darling, so this is definitely a very female-centred film, like some others by Schroeder. It is based on the character of Maria Malibran, and, this, and the title already gives away a major spoiler, as the movie is about a female opera singer, and nobody should be surprised that there are, a major, there are major musical genre components in here from start to finish, but not even from this perspective it is working. These slightly over 100 minutes are the perfect example of why stage plays almost never translate well to the screen. I would say that frequent theatre-goers may even have a good time seeing this one on stage, but from a theatrical perspective it is not working out at all. 
the acting is basically overacting from start to finish and this refers to dialogue as well as body language and physical acting the sets and costumes may be pompous but they basically try to hide the lack of convincing scenes and performances the worst thing here is however that from the bio biopic biopic perspective stated in the title the film's not working out at all and this is a negative deal breaker for sure for such a long movie I never cared for Malibran or the other characters, they just weren't interesting enough. Also, as a musical, I cannot say I enjoyed The Watch. The singing was not bad, but felt uninspired and stereotypical, extremely generic. I don't recommend The Watch at all, This, as this movie dragged so much that I was glad when it was actually over. Major thumbs down, and this is a major contender for Schroeder's worst. What a great collection of criticism. This is an enigmatic and clearly divisive film. It is probably most pleasurable, viewed on LSD. And no, not, every, not everything is enjoyable on LSD. On the contrary, given how easy it is to fall headfirst into a bad time, I am most drawn to works that inspire positivity in such a state of mind. Well, maybe I'm just particular, and I know what makes me feel happy and positive. Well, hopefully I can find this out firsthand soon. Anyway, watch for Death of Maria Malibran, sober or otherwise, and do inform me of what your opinion is.